In January this year, a test flight pierced the skies above the Mojave Desert in Los Angeles to become the first ever privately funded aircraft that broke the sound barrier. American manufacturer Boom Supersonics test aircraft XB-1 achieved Mach 1.122, which is a speed of a little under 1400 kilometers per hour. Research on the sonic boom, which is a thunderous shockwave created by aircraft when they fly faster than the speed of sound, forms the core strategy of Boom Supersonic, which was established in 2014. And it is now banking on US President Donald Trump's keen interest in commercial supersonic flight. Before we dive deep into this fascinating topic, I have an appeal. The print won the support of discerning viewers and readers like you because of its responsible and high-quality granular coverage. But this quality of journalism requires resources. And that means we need viewers and readers like you to consider taking subscriptions to support our work. Subscriptions to the print come with a host of special privileges which you can find in the description below. I urge you to support us and help us produce more quality work. Coming back to the topic, in June this year, Trump signed an executive order titled Leading the World in Supersonic Flight to enter a bold new chapter in aerospace innovation. The order lifted a 52-year ban on commercial supersonic flight over land in the US, which was the same restriction that had earlier prevented the Concorde from operating transcontinental flights. Do keep in mind that Trump has already signed several executive orders on issues ranging from AI to cryptocurrency, very evidently to establish a global tech supremacy. I quote from the order, For more than 50 years, outdated and overly restrictive regulations have grounded the promise of supersonic flight over land, stifling American ingenuity, weakening our global competitiveness, and ceding leadership to foreign adversaries. The print spoke to Denver headquartered Boom Supersonic about this order. The company said that the order will allow for civil aircraft to fly faster than Mark 1 over land in the US as long as no sonic boom reaches the ground. What is Mark 1 and what is a sonic boom? The Mark number is essentially the ratio of the speed of the aircraft to the speed of sound. An airplane flying at less than Mark 1 is traveling at subsonic speeds. At about Mark 1, it is transonic, and greater than Mark 1, it is supersonic. The XP-1 is the platform on which Boom Supersonic plans to launch a commercial supersonic aircraft, which it has named Overture. When in cruise mode, the jet could reach altitudes of about 60,000 feet. Now, before we get into how the XP-1 prevents the sonic boom from reaching the ground, let's look at why this shockwave is created in the first place. We have already discussed that the sonic boom is a thunder-like noise. When an object or an aircraft is supersonic, air around it reacts like fluid. As the object travels through the air, the air molecules are pushed aside with a great force and this forms a shockwave. Just like how a boat traveling on water creates a wave. The bigger an aircraft, the more air it displaces. Now, the shock wave forms a cone of pressurized air molecules which moves outward and rearward. As this cone spreads along the flight path, a continuous sonic boom is created. What you hear is the sharp release of pressure. So, how does the company Boom Supersonic prevent this noise from reaching the ground? And what speed does it reach over water? Watch the video on your screens as I explain this. The company says it leverages well-established Mach cutoff physics where a sonic boom refracts upward due to temperature and wind gradients that affect the local speed of sound. This is similar to how light bends when passing through a glass of water. By flying at a sufficiently high altitude at an appropriate speed for a given atmospheric condition, the sonic boom never reaches the ground. So, how is the speed regulated according to the local conditions? Overture's autopilot is designed in a way that it changes the jet's speed in real time. Over land, the jet plans to attain speeds of up to Mach 1.3, with typical speed between Mach 1.1 and 1.2. Over water, however, Overture aims to reach its top cruising speed of Mach 1.7, which would be about 2100 km per hour. And Overture has a planned flight range of 7867 km. But the effort to keep the noise down begins even as the aircraft is on the ground. The manufacturer said that Overture will have landing and takeoff noise levels similar to any subsonic long-haul aircraft. It said that one major difference between the Concorde and Overture is that Overture will take off without afterburners. 
Symphony, its turbofan engine will be quieter than the Concorde's turbojet engines with afterburners. An afterburner injects extra fuel into the exhaust to produce extra thrust in an aircraft. It is known to be loud and a fuel guzzler, but serves the purpose of many military aircraft. The company said that four engines have been mounted on the wings behind the pressurized passenger cabin to minimize risk to flyers in case of engine failures. Historically, supersonic aircraft have only been developed by militaries and governments. XP-1's supersonic flight, which it calls Boomless Cruise, marks the first time an independently developed jet has broken the sound barrier. The XP-1 test jet provides the foundation for Overture, which has already found takers in leading airlines. Overture's order book stands at 130 aircraft right now, including orders and pre-orders from American Airlines, United Airlines and Japan Airlines. American Airlines made a deposit on up to 20 aircraft with an option for 40 more in August 2022. Japan Airlines was one of its earliest backers, announcing a strategic partnership to bring commercial supersonic travel to passengers with an option for 20 aircraft. The company says it has raised about $600 million in investments. Trump's executive order said that within 18 months of its signing, which was on June 6, the US Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, will establish a standard for supersonic aircraft noise certification. The norms will define acceptable noise thresholds for takeoff, landing, and en route supersonic operation. Supersonic flight over land was banned in the US in the 1970s after the FAA and Congress faced public anger following test flights that led to complaints of noise pollution and even damage in some areas. This move came just a few years before British Airways began its first regular Concorde service from London to Bahrain. The Concorde was later retired in 2003 after three decades in service because it was proving to be financially unviable other than problems of noise and limited use. The Concorde was jointly developed by the French and British governments under a 1962 treaty. Last year, Boom Supersonic completed the construction on its Overture Super Factory in North Carolina, where it plans to build 66 Overture aircraft per year. The XP-1 is a stepping stone in its plan to develop a commercially viable supersonic airliner capable of carrying 60 to 80 passengers across the Atlantic in about three and a half hours. It said that there are over 600 global routes that are economically viable for supersonic flight, even without going supersonic over land. And now that the rules are being relaxed in the US, additional routes will benefit from speed ups. With speeds 40 to 50% faster than conventional airlines, the company says that passengers can now travel from San Francisco to New York in 3 hours 30 minutes instead of just over 5 hours. Hybrid routes with overland and overwater segments such as Chicago to Frankfurt will also see massive time savings.